All right, folks, today's lecture will focus on the cross price elasticity. Cross price elasticity. And this is very useful because now we could compare two goods and we can now see what's going to happen when there is a price increase or decrease in one of the goods. How will consumers respond in consuming more or less of a different good? And like price elasticity of demand, supply, and income elasticity, we have big E to represent elasticity. But now we can see something different. We're not going to have sub P. We're not going to have sub I. Rather, we're going to have sub X and sub Y. And this is how we denote cross price elasticity. Now, mind you, the X represents a good on the X axis. Usually it's the quantity and Y on the Y axis represents the price of a good that's changing. Now, if we were to look at this in an equation format using the percent change, we would have as follows percent change in quantity of good X over the percent change of price in good Y. And the good thing is, once again, we see a correlation of Q on the x-axis, price on the y-axis. Now, like income elasticity, cross price elasticity, the sign matters. The sign matters. For example, if we were to have E sub X sub Y, and here we have the quantity of good X over the price of good Y, what happens if the price of good Y increases? And let's say that consumers are going to consume less of good X. Now, notice that we're going to have a negative value on the numerator and we're going to have a positive value on the denominator. When we have a negative over positive, we are going to get a negative value. And this represents a negative sign, a complementary relationship between good X and good Y. So when we get a negative value, Good X, good Y are both complementary in terms of its relationship. Now, another example would be if we have the quantity of good X, price of good Y. If the price of good Y still increases in price, but now consumers are going to consume more good X, now we're going to have a positive on the numerator, a positive on the denominator, and we're bound to get a positive value. So when we get a positive value, now we can say that good X and good Y have a substitute relationship. A substitute relationship. So back to our example of a negative value. Let's say, for example, that good X represents donuts. Good Y represents coffee. If the price of coffee increases, you are going to consume less donuts. So think about that. Price of coffee now is more expensive. Why would you want to buy donuts? It's no longer appealing as it was before. Hence, donuts and coffee are both complementary goods. Now in the case of good X, good Y, in our second example here, we can say, for example, good X represents coffee that is made in coffee bean. And good Y is coffee made at Starbucks. If Starbucks increases price, there's a good chance that consumers are going to substitute Starbucks for coffee bean. 
And that's why we would see a positive value referring to a substitute relationship between good X and Y. Coffee made from coffee bean, coffee made from Starbucks. Now the good thing too, like the other equations, if we do not have numbers in percent format, all that we need to do is simply find the change in quantity of good X over the change in price of good Y. And again, we have two types of equations we can use. Uh, we could also extend this to use the midpoint equation as well. Now, in the case of an example, we could use Starbucks, once again, as our example, increases price of coffee from 250 to three dollars thus increases quantity of coffee at coffee bean from two to five cups. What is the cross price elasticity Now we could see that the two sets of numbers are not in percent format. So we would then have to use this equation and not this equation. Number two, we could also see that these two sets of numbers represents the quantity and the price. But remember that cross price elasticity, we are focusing on the price change of one good and the price change is happening in the Starbucks coffee. So good Y will represent Starbucks. Whereas the quantity consume represents coffee bean. So good X is going to represent the amount of coffee consume at coffee bean. We can now use this portion here to calculate the cross price elasticity of coffee bean with respect to the change of price in Starbucks coffee. Big E, X, and Y. Again, X represents coffee bean. I'm going to put CB for coffee bean. And Y represents Starbucks. I'm using their ticker symbol, SBUX. So now we can see the change in quantity. And the change in quantity comes back to the consumption of coffee at coffee bean. From two to five. Five must be the new quantity of Q2. Five minus two over two. And this represents, once again, coffee bean coffee. Now we have the price, and here we have from 250 to three dollars. So three would represent P2, the new price, minus 2.5 is the old price. So once we do that, we can put three dollars minus 2.5 over 2.5 and parentheses. Now we can solve for this equation. We're now going to have 3 over 2 on the numerator and now we're going to have 0.5 over 2.5 on the denominator. So once we know how to solve the equation we should have here 1.5 over 0.2 which gives us a final answer of 7.50, and it's also a positive sign. So if you remember with the income elasticity, cross price elasticity also gives us a two-part answer. And now we can see that we have a positive sign, which says that both coffee bean and Starbucks are substitutes to each other, that is their relationship. And we have 7.5, which is greater than one. 
So it is elastic. And again, and again, the higher the number, the more elastic it is. So what we can say with the answer of 7.5 is when Starbucks increases price by 50 cents, consumers are going to react, respond fast, elastic, in consuming more coffee bean coffee. Which means consumers know that a 50 cent price increase in Starbucks is enough to drive consumers away and make consumers now flock to coffee bean to buy coffee bean coffee. So if you think about this from the perspective of producers, this is really key to know what is the cross price elasticity to be able to either put a welcome sign to former Starbucks patrons into your coffee bean cafe. Or in this case, now you know exactly if you are Starbucks that you should not, you should not increase price by 50 cents. Because if you do, your customers are going to leave you and they are on their way to go buy coffee at your rival 